I just took all of the wool that I have out of the shelves and put it on the floor. I'm going to go through it today, maybe de-stash, organize and hopefully feel excited about the wool that I have because right now I'm feeling overwhelmed by the amount of wool. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. And things did in fact get worse. I got everything out on the floor and thought I was off to a good start. Actually, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. When I see it, it's nice to see all the colors out. And yes, it's a lot of wool. I don't think I would be able to knit everything up in a year. <laughs> and also it's not a goal to get rid of like everything. I feel it's not out of control. So actually it's a good thing. It was quite a bit of work to put it all out on the floor, but it feels like I'm off to a good start. Next step for me will be to grab everything and see if I want to keep it, if it sparks joy. Yes, I did once read the KonMari book. So next up, I'm going to go through all the wool and decide whether I want to keep it, if I'm excited by it, and I'm going to start with the easier ones. So for me, that's going to be Lopi. I already know I want to keep everything. Then I'm going to go over some of the single skeins that I have, holst garn, sort of the things that are easy for me to decide on before I move on to the ones that may be a little bit more difficult. But first, let me grab a cup of tea because this is probably going to take some time. Let me explain a little bit what you're looking at. So over here we have a lot of lopi wool, this whole area there. And I actually have plans to knit sweaters with those, just not finalized, but I will use that up. I've um, a lot of balls that I've already used for uh, other sweaters. I've knit five of them now and I plan to knit many more. Here is a lot of um, superwash merino, or uh, not everything is superwash. Oh, this one doesn't belong. But that's from when I just started knitting. And I tend to use it still, but only for uh, when I'm knitting toys, for example. I have some leftovers from project, so I'm actually wearing socks. I have some alpaca there, I use it for hand warmers and some malabrigo I think over there, used for hand warmers, uh, left over from a project. I also have some samples. Then there's a big section there, the white wool and all the, the balls here. This area is all gifted. It's mostly hand spun. I plan to use it for, I think, uh, toy knitting again, because it's lots of yeah, smaller balls as well. So with the hand spun, I'm not sure yet what to do with that, but it looks beautiful. And then here is an area with a lot of uh, phenol from Rauma plan to do some color work with that. Um, some from Retrosaria, I think, in Lissabon, a shop. It was sort of a souvenir. I still want to knit something with it. Maybe something for a baby, nice sweater. Holst garn in the back. Um, it's for some new projects. I'm working on a shawl by Stephen West and Amcal and there are some leftovers in the back also from an Amcal. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I have this big cone so this one and this one is uh, super soft and this is the coast which is a mix of wool and cotton I think yeah 50-50. So I want to knit either a cardigan, summer cardigan or a really 
thin throw, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that one yet. And this one, it looks quite full, but I've already used quite a bit of it on a baby blanket, a half and a half wrap by Pearl Soho. This is one of the yarns that I probably want to let go of because I bought it actually for my grandmother. I thought the wool would be a little bit thicker, but I sort of misjudged it. Anyway, I thought she might want to use it for socks, but it was too thin for her and I tried knitting with it and I love the colors, but I did not like knitting with it. And this is a quite recent addition, uh, all from Westwool, Stephen West. I want to use it for a shawl, something with color work, probably from Stephen West. I have some alpaca over there for a muscle bird and uh, mittens, another one I want to knit mittens with. I don't know how many mittens you need, like fingerless mittens, but I love wearing those. It's a beautiful hand dyed yarn by Annabelle Williams. After I made the selection, I started to put away the wool I wanted to keep. And that's when disaster struck. I found a moth. And then I had to rethink my strategy because there's no way I'm going to gift or donate or store away moth infested wool. I didn't see it until after I finished organizing all the wool. So what happened when I was organizing the wool, I was putting it on the floor, switching things around and that may have somehow contaminated the other yarn. I'm not sure I didn't. I'm not sure I did. Now, I'm not ready to give up all the yarn that I have, so I need a plan of attack. So there are a couple of things that I came up with. Well, YouTube, Google. Mothballs are a no, because I'm afraid the chemicals that are used to kill the moths are going to penetrate the wool and they have a distinct smell and I do not want that in my hands when I'm working with it. So no mothballs. I am going to get pheromone traps for the wool stash as well as upstairs where my clothing is. And now they're not going to fix a possible infestation of eggs. They are only uh, there to target the adults. The adults don't eat the wool, it's the larvae. So I need something to kill those as well, or the eggs. And one of the options is freezing. However, my freezer is about this big, so it would fit maybe three skeins of wool. And I'm not sure that will do the trick because it has to be in there for weeks to be effective. So then the my last line of defense is heat. So I'm thinking of using my steam iron. Two is to use hot water, so boiling water actually. Now I know you, you can't wash wool on 100 degrees, but as long as you don't agitate the wool and you don't put in soap, then I'm sure it can handle it and I think that's a good way to, to kill the eggs. However, it's a lot of work because it means unwinding the, the skeins, uh, putting them in the water, drying them, and you have to handle them with a lot of care because otherwise they get tangled. And then I might put something in my oven. I mean, I'm not sure how low it goes, but at least it gets hot enough. I might be able to leave the skein intact. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one, but I, I might try it. And then lastly, after all that's done, I want to separate it as much as possible and use clear plastic containers to store everything and yeah keep an eye on everything <sighs> yeah it's not fun it's a couple of days later which is good because it gave me some time to think about my approach <laughs> i had some wild plans like boiling the wool and whatever but I think I have a good idea of how to make sure I kill the larvae or eggs that could be in the wool. I'm going to put a strainer over a pan of boiling water and steam the wool. I'm also going to use my ironing board, that way I can speed things up a bit. I'm not looking forward to it because yeah, it's probably going to take a while, but 
at least that way I know I did everything I could to make sure my wool is safe and I'm not getting like an infestation of moths. Moth, moth, moths, moths. The part is so tough. Another thing that I'm going to try is add some lavender essential oil to the water that I'm steaming the wool with. I'm hoping that will help prevent future moths from entering the wool and laying their eggs there. I'm sure the lavender won't prevent future moths from entering my house, but it might help, you know, every layer of protection that I can add, I'll, I'll take it. And to try it out, I'll use some of these scraps first so that if anything bad happens, at least I'm not ruining all the balls of wool. To be sure, I left the paper wrappers on and I used a timer to make sure I steamed everything long enough. I started off with about a minute. For the bigger cones, I would do a minute per side or even a couple of minutes. For the cones, I later decided to do an extra round with a steam iron. And for the slightly bulkier items like the roving that I use for filling, using a tea towel instead of a lid seemed to work really good. Okay, <laughs> with paper. Well, it seems to work okay. It's hot. And then I just kept going and going and going. Don't forget to top off the water because you don't want your pan to cook dry. After steaming, I would put the balls on top of a tea towel that was laying on a drying rack. And while everything was drying, I prepped the plastic boxes. It's all dry now and I cleaned the container that it's going in. I have no idea how long I have to wait but um, I'm just going to leave it here for now. The only thing is it smells like wool so much that I'm afraid I'm going to attract, attract moss to the wool. <laughs> All in all, I think the whole process cost me about two hours, the steaming, everything. But then I left everything for a couple more hours to dry before I put everything in the plastic boxes. I didn't want to overstuff them, so I packed them sparingly because stuffing the boxes would leave gaps along the lids and I didn't want to have openings for moths to enter. And with the boxes that I had, I was able to comfortably pack everything away for now. And then for the lopy wool and the hand spun wool, I'll probably need to add a couple more boxes. In the coming weeks, I will be checking my wool regularly. So I think maybe weekly or every couple of days, I have most of it in sight in my living room. So it's easy for me to give the boxes a shake and see if there's any activity in the boxes. That's it for today. I am I am keeping my fingers crossed that I did it right and that I was able to kill any larvae or eggs that were in the wool. So for now it's going to be a waiting game. I didn't do all the wool. I haven't tackled the lopi or the yarn that I put up for more long-term storage, but I will probably do that this weekend. 
it's going to be the same process so steaming everything and I'm curious to see what happens with the hand spun yarn if that will work or if I'm going to destroy it but I mean I have to do something because if there's moths in there it's just going to get worse if I don't act on it so we'll see I'm also going to start knitting with the wool because I think that would be the best way to make sure this doesn't happen again and also by disturbing the wool and using it it's less attractive to the moths so let's hope it works as i'm editing this video we're a couple of weeks in the future and so far i caught one moth in the trap i've seen one in my living room but I haven't seen any damage or activity in the wool so far. I'll keep my fingers crossed and I'll update you in the future.